Hello guys and welcome to MX5 World Sim Series 2023 season round 7 and today we are driving around Alton Park. So before we go to the race recap I just want to apologize. apologize for the exceptionally bad quality of the video. Especially the, the VR footage is quite bad. Even on my screen right now it looks very blurry and there will be places where the FPS drops uh, dips quite a lot. I think it's due to the fact that I bought a new gaming monitor. I probably just missed all the settings that I had. Anyway, back to the race. As you can see, I'm starting way back. On a grid, I missed my qualifying quite badly. I'm starting from 31st position. I was pretty much like 8 tenths behind the lap time that I was uh, looking for to achieve in the qualifying, but it is what it is. And I just have to make the best out of this situation right now. So yeah, I lost my position or two during the start. And now there's gonna be a contact in front. Uh, that's uh, Spirit 14 cars and the water going off track. A couple of few cars also left and right. But I survived. And one car on the right hand side of me. I was taking these first few corners quite easy. Because I knew starting from 31st position. I got only something to lose during the first few corners. Nothing to gain. I just want to let the situation settle down and then I will see what the race will bring. So I think that is Matt Tempest in front of me, behind me, uh, Finnish driver Harder, who is going to take a, who is going to get a better run through this uh, shallow corner. And as you will see, I, uh, I was just moving to the inside line. He was having a much better run through the corner, carrying much more speed. He moved to the outside here and I, as you can see I will lift off the throttle quite early because I didn't want to make it too wide to the Nika Prook in lap 1. I wasn't really trusting the cold tires and also, like I said, I saw nothing to gain there, only something to lose. But yeah, now it looks like uh, positions are settled, so let's see what the race will bring. And this is a... we are starting now lap 2, so only like 10 seconds later. And, and there's gonna be a huge moment when we reach the hairpin or the cellulose corner. Also here, a very close call, honestly. Uh, but we survived. Not quite sure who those cars were. And at this point I didn't have any idea like in what position I am. Uh, but... Uh, it must be better than 31, that's for sure. Anyway, now we are reaching the cellulose corner. There's gonna be a huge pile up. So smoke there. And it's pretty much just gambling. Should I go inside or should I go outside? So <laughs> I just, yeah. I found this car facing me and I had to stop uh, to stand still. And a lot of cars going past by me there. So that was pretty unlucky. But yeah can't change this right now so have to live with the situation and make the best out of it as well. And there's another thing in front of me, Tilos, uh, on the left hand side of the road in a North Cloud car and I knew from the previous races that me and him we were having quite a similar pace throughout the season so I was expecting from now on that this race will probably be me and him uh, chasing each others there unless something like accidents happen but we will see. And this is now lap 3, and this uh, long train of cars was starting to forming up. I was actually running the last place on this uh, on this train, so that's actually a pretty good spot to just sit back and wait for mayhem to happen, <laughs> so to say. So I was just sitting back, relaxing, and uh, like waiting for a overtaking opportunities. And speaking about opportunities, Tilo's making a move on Kelly Man in front, and. I wasn't like I didn't want to fall too back, uh, too far behind of Tilo, so I was trying to like stick with him, and I was trying to make the move on Kellyman, move to the uh, to the outside, but then he lifted, uh, did exactly the same thing that I did on lap one, and well, yeah, I gained a position there. I would have made it too wide this time, but this is better. This is now lap 5, and Tilo's in front is making another move 
or gaining another position, he's making a move on Edward Krop. And at this point, I remember I was thinking, like, uh, I need to do something quickly. I don't wanna let, like, Tilos go away. I'm not quite sure in which starting position he started to race, but if I remember correctly, it wasn't half bad. Also, he was having great pace, so I really wanted to follow him, but... And why he's in front of me is he was a little bit unlucky in the second lap accident in the Sailor's corner, so that's why he's in front of me in the first place. Also, I wasn't having any like a pressure from behind at this point in time. I was still, he made a mistake there. I wasn't really seeing, expecting that to happen, but yeah, he made a mistake. I moved to the outside, and all of a sudden, I'm leading him. Uh, yeah, that turns uh, things upside down. It's not like it's not like I'm just going to disappear. That's for sure. But yeah, I'll take it. And this is now one lap later. This is where I make a move on Edward Krop in front of me. So yeah, I get a better run through that corner. Nick approved. Uh, I saw the door was open, so I moved inside. That's by the way, Stefan Aldering in front now. Uh, very uh, familiar driver for me from the side of this driver's cup, so it was very like nice to find him on the track there. We were having quite nice battles uh, last season. So always a pleasure. Uh, yeah, so I gained a position. Don't really know in which position I'm at right now, but we will see in a moment. And this is now one lap later. I think we are starting lap 8. And at this point I was I was feeling like I had more pace than the cars in front. But not that much that the overtaking was being easy. It was actually far from easy. Even though I was like constantly trying to uh, position my car in a way that I will get a good exit and good run on the cars in front. But yeah. Just have to just have to follow these cars for now and see what the race will bring. And this is still the same lap and yeah I was I wasn't really like alongside Stefan Aldering so I lifted but he's having a unoptimal line through the corner now also Tilo's behind me have that had it like a huge run on me so I decided to hold the inside line we are going side by side with Stefan Aldering now we are going this double right hander side by side we are also touching each other there was actually the, like there was no like room between the two of us. Very close racing. It, it was fair, but there was like no room between us. This is where I make a mistake. So I was leaving room inside. I went on the throttle slightly too early. I thought that the front tires will have a creep, but they did not understeer, understeer to the grass and lost a few positions there. But yeah, that was great racing. That's a back marker now. Who went past by me? So that wasn't a real. Uh, that wasn't position lost there. Oh yeah, great racing. Uh, this is now a few laps later. It took me a couple laps to catch these guys again. But of course it's fa it's always faster to drive around the track alone than being part of the train. I think my uh, the last lap was 142.46 for me. Uh, I think that was my fastest lap. And honestly it was a uh, very really good lap time for me. Anyway, uh, Aldering and Tilos going side by side to the Nicky Brook. And Aldering going off track. Tilos went a little slowly there as well, so I saw opportunity and gained two positions. Almost as if I would have gained my position back there. But yeah, uh, that was nice opportunity. Didn't really expect that to happen. Uh, Aldering and Tilos, they were fighting quite hard as well. Hard but fair. And that it was just a unfortunate racing incident that happened between two of them. And the remaining race was pretty much me just uh, trying to make some gains, like here. But I, I, at least for me, the draft wasn't that huge. Maybe I was, I wasn't having like a great run through the shallowest corner. Because that's it's very important to get a good run so that you will have so that you will have a time to make your move before the nick approach. But also maybe it's because cars in front are also having a toe, so it's almost like a DRS train 
what happens in Formula One quite often. Again here trying to make a move on this uh, it's actually Matt, Matt Tempest in front. So the guy who overtook me on start. So yeah, but I wasn't really like alongside him and I also had to pay attention to Tilos behind me because I knew he's also taking advantage of every situation that will happen. And this is now we are starting last lap and this is where I was a little bit unlucky so there was a little bit contact or at least one car went off track. I got stuck behind him, he moved the outside line, a contact in front and I just got hit there. Hit the wall. There was not much I could have done there differently. Yeah, I just need to do uh, like a safe rejoin here. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, worried when I heard that they, I got a wheel damage, but the car was still in a good condition and I was able to drive it over to the finish line, only one lap to go. It wasn't really fast at this point, but there was no immediate danger from behind either. And this is now me coming over to the finish line. I gained a position, I overtook Matt Tempest who was going even slower than me, maybe he was having more damage from the contact. But yeah, even though the last lap incident, uh, I'm still quite happy how the race went. It was a very like, enjoyable race for me and I enjoyed quite a lot. But yeah, that's uh, for the video, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you and bye bye.